This is a rocket plane I built to see how fast it could fly. It uses one of the largest model rocket engines I could get to fly to speeds way faster than any of my previous model aircraft. It's made of cardboard tubes, 3D printed parts and balsa wood and is based on the real life plane that currently holds the record for the fastest plane ever built, the X-15. Over the years I've been on a journey to build faster and faster RC planes, modifying and upgrading jets to push my airspeed record higher. Currently that record sits at 145 miles an hour, achieved with a plane I built a couple of years ago. But now I'm ready to take my model aircraft research to the next level through designing new planes capable of reaching even greater speeds. And that's why I thought it would be a good idea to build a plane like the X-15, as that plane was NASA's attempt to discover just how fast you could fly, testing new materials and engines to the absolute limit. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with this next plane. The primary objective was to build a rocket plane that could go faster than any aircraft I'd built before. But this wouldn't be easy at all. Well, that wasn't good. As going faster makes getting the vehicle back down safely much less likely. Oh no! I thought starting with parts from a model rocket kit would be a great idea, as it's almost always simpler to build on something that already exists. I decided on a high power model rocket kit that came with some really solid components, perfect for building the X-15. The kit included a super strong fuselage tube and some beefy centering rings, which are used for mounting the powerful rocket engine. The only problem was, while these parts were incredibly strong, they were also quite heavy, which could be a bit of a problem. Next, to bring the design to life, I used 3D software to create a digital version of the plane, based on the dimensions of my new rocket parts, and this would be really helpful in helping to make an accurate model of the X-15. Some parts needed to be modified, like the body tube, which was a little too long. Some parts, though, would need to be made entirely from scratch. Unfortunately, the nose cone was one of these items, as the one in the kit didn't match the real X-15. With this, I could just use the CAD model's nose cone, and this was printed out on my Bamboo Labs P1S 3D printer, which only took around an hour. Now we had a nose that exactly matched the real X-15. Next, it was time to turn this rocket into a rocket plane, and that meant adding the wings and tail surfaces. Although this plane was going to start life as a pure, unguided rocket with no control system, the plan was to convert it to RC later if the initial test flights all went well. For now though, the fins and wings would be simple sheets of material with no electronically controlled surfaces to steer it. It would work just like a normal rocket, with a parachute to help it land safely. These wings and tail surfaces were precision laser cut from strong plywood, and epoxied through holes cut at precise locations along the fuselage tube. Since the single sheet sheet wings weren't strong enough on their own, I reinforced them by laminating them with lightweight balsa wood. Now it was all starting to look like a fast rocket plane. The fuselage wasn't just going to be a simple tube though, the real X-15 had distinctive bulges on either side, so I shaped these using strips of balsa wood. This took hours of sanding and filling to get smooth, but after a while it all started to come together. Right, painting time. We'll start with a mist coat and then we'll build up the layers from there and uh, I'm not going to put too much paint on because we want to keep this aeroplane as light as possible. It's already going to be very heavy for the wing area. Hopefully it ends up looking just like the real X-15. With the stickers applied, my Patreon's names added to the bottom surface of the fuselage, and everything fully assembled, our first X-15 prototype was mostly complete, and it looked pretty cool. Of course though, to launch a rocket you need more than just the rocket itself, so we had to prepare all of the launch equipment and rocket motors. This included assembling a suitable launch rail, which would guide the rocket on its first meter off the ground. We would also need a hand controller, which would be wired straight to the electronic igniter. Whoa! These are used to set off the rockets remotely at a safe distance. Ah, there we go. And of course, we needed to test all of this out to make sure it worked and that we weren't going to have any problems at the launch site. Finally, we turned attention to the all-important parachute, which would allow the rocket to float safely back down to the ground. The second important goal of this project. 
I hope this parachute is going to be big enough. <laughs> On a model rocket, the parachute is usually deployed by a small ejection charge that happens automatically once the rocket has been launched. Once all of the fuel has burnt out, a delay charge ignites, subsequently triggering the ejection charge at just the right moment. This blast pops the nose off the rocket, pulling out the parachute on a shock cord. That's the theory anyway. We'd done multiple simulations on Open Rocket to check that the X-15 would work, but it was looking a little bit narrow on the stability margin. So that's, that's the centre of gravity. So it's kind of over the wing, which is what you want for an aeroplane. You know, you want it to be over the um, front 30% of the wing, but for a rocket, you probably want it to be a bit further forward. So we'll see, that could also be a bit of a problem. Based on previous similar rockets I've flown, it's never been an issue. It's just that I'm worried that this one has taken quite a while to design and build, so I don't want it to go wrong. After a solid couple of weeks of designing, planning and constructing, we could now head up to our normal flying field for the first test flight of our new X-15. The aim for this flight would be to simply find out how well the rocket flew on the smaller F-size engine, which would produce around 6 kilograms of peak lifting force. If it matched our simulations, it should get up to around 108 miles an hour. I hope that seagull disappears, otherwise it's going to get shot down in a second. If it could reach this speed successfully, we'd have the green light to fly it on some bigger motors to try and hit some higher speeds. We've got this rolling, that's rolling, drone's rolling, all the cameras over there are rolling. Okay, and then we're going to do a countdown? Yeah. Okay, so arming, ready, X-15 going for launch in five, four, three, two, one, ignition. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! The X-15 had crashed. What had gone so wrong? Well that wasn't good. I think our simulations might have warned us about that. Oh, that's so annoying. Right, come on, come on, let's, let's go and look. Oh my goodness! How has that happened? In one piece. Oh, it's missing a fin. Oh. It's missing a fin, but it's almost completely unscathed. Parachute came out, so... At least that bit worked. So the engine successfully fired. Um, it was a bit slow off the launch rail. We actually needed more power, I think. Uh, and also more of a stability margin. So yeah, we've got uh, a bit of work to do and then I think we can uh, maybe try again. <laughs> this is going to be harder than I thought. Back to the workshop. Returning to the workshop with a battered and broken X-15, we could start work on studying the footage and figuring out exactly what went wrong. If we could fix the stability problem on the next launch, we should then be able to see a successful flight. Thankfully, our X-15 was repairable. So like all good engineers, we would embark on a thorough program of investigation and improvements. You might have been wondering about where we build all of these rockets and aeroplanes. We recently moved into the brand new Project Air workshop and have been slowly improving it with all sorts of cool features, such as our state-of-the-art model train transportation system to move things from room to room, and have been decorating it with some really cool artwork. These metal posters behind me are from Displate, and they have actually sponsored this video with an ad. Displate.com is home to over 2 million artworks, including licensed deals from iconic brands and franchises, which can be shipped to you in just 4 to 5 business days, in the form of these high-quality metal posters. Now, the one thing I love about these is the way that they mount to the wall as it's really quite clever. Basically you just put this sticky pad onto the wall which is actually a magnet and then the metal posters sort of like clonk into place. It's tool free and you just use your hands really just to press the pads onto the wall. Each displate comes with a magnet kit and everything you need is in the box. Also, displate's latest release, Textra, includes a load of licensed brands and these posters have premium finishes. Currently you can get one displate for 25% off or two displates for 30% off. And this is also available on the Textra displates. Make sure to check out the link in the description or use the code Project Air. All right, let's fix the X-15. After reviewing all of the data from the first test launch, we managed to piece together a solid theory about what went wrong. It all came down to the wings. For a stable flight, the CG needs to be ahead of the CP. This ensures that any disturbance creates a restoring torque effect, pulling the rocket back to its original flight path. 
Fins at the rear of a rocket increase aerodynamic stability by shifting the CP rearward, keeping the rocket steady in flight. The problem with our X-15 is that it's designed like an aeroplane, which has the center of pressure located over the midpoint of the central wing, where most of the lift is generated. The center of gravity previously was only a little further forward, meaning our stability margin was very small. Clearly then, we had to make the rocket plane behave more like a rocket. I needed to repair the tail and increase its effectiveness to pull the center of pressure as far back as possible. At the same time, we needed to make it a bit stronger. I started by experimenting with the original fins from the rocket kit, combining them with balsa wood to create longer and stronger fins. Unfortunately, these turned out to be too heavy. That is too heavy. I think I'm going to use foam board. If the fins were too heavy, they would pull the center of gravity rearward, which would mean we'd have to add even more counterweight to the nose to balance it out. Lightweight fins were absolutely essential. That's better. We'd previously tested foam board fins on a rocket plane that reached 145 miles an hour, and surprisingly, they'd actually survived. However, this X-15 would be flying much faster, so I wasn't sure if the foam board would hold up to the extreme airspeeds. However, pushing the envelope and going into the unknown is what this program is all about. With the extended fins sorted, it was time to tackle the opposite end of the aircraft, with the center of gravity problem. To figure out the right balance, I built a simple stand from foam board. This would help us to find the more precisely. So what we need to do is add lead until it gets to around here-ish. So I'm going to put it on where I want the CG to be and then I'm going to keep adding lead to this basket until it levels out. This sheet lead was going to be tricky to get pushed up right into the nose. Helpfully, lead has a relatively low melting point of just 327.5 degrees Celsius. So I could reshape it really quite easily with the help of a blowtorch and lots of protective equipment. Don't try this at home. First metal cast on Project Air. Looks like we might have succeeded. After casting the lead into a mould, the result was surprisingly good for a first attempt. Now I had a very nose-heavy nose. One of the final jobs was to install a more optimised camera to capture all of the important onboard footage. So there's the battery and the board and everything in there. And then we've got the flashing light and that means that the camera is on. Now to prep the new G-size rocket motor, which was twice as powerful as the last engine, and set a delay for the ejection charge. After a final balance test, we were now ready for action. With twice the power and improved aerodynamics, could we now get a successful flight? So the speed we're hoping to get out of this test flight is 180 miles an hour, which will be faster than any rocket plane I've ever built before. So this will be really useful for when we put our seat on this thing. And um, yeah, if it can go 180 miles an hour straight up, should have no problem doing that, at least going the other way or going horizontally, I mean. <laughs> As you'd expect, to fly powerful model rockets, you need to follow safety guidelines through ensuring there is enough space in case anything goes wrong with the launch or parachute recovery. So we made sure that our field was plenty big enough for any mishaps. Patiently, we waited for the cloud base to raise and some blue patches of sky to appear as the light started to shine through. I was confident that we'd solved all of the issues, but of course, there's always some opportunity for something else to go a bit wrong. If something went wrong now, the X-15 might be completely destroyed and the project would end up in a miserable failure. Okay, and then we're going to go for launch in 10 seconds. Whatever happened though, with this higher power engine, it was going to be spectacular. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Two, one. <laughs> yes! Look at it go! Eject! Eject! Up there! Eject! 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 Oh no. Oh! Oh no! I don't think we're getting that camera footage back. That hit with force. <laughs> oh my 
Oh no, did you hear that scream? Yeah. <laughs> oh my. So the rocket was down in the field, but not exactly in the way that we intended. I think it's actually just stuck in the ground. <laughs> I think that's what you call a lawn dart in the, uh, <laughs> the trade. Oh no, I think I can see what happened. Well, I can see what the result is anyway. I don't know what happened. Thankfully, we had of course taken precautions for this eventuality by flying in a field big enough for this sort of crash landing to occur as safely as possible. Oh, it's a proper lawn dart, that. I thought the rest of it was just going to sort of explode out everywhere. The only bit that's come off is, is part of this uh, side bulge and uh, this sticker. <laughs> Due to the soft mud, amazingly, the airframe was almost completely intact, which was quite a surprise. It's like a, um, it's like a golf uh, hole. <laughs> we I'm... just made our own golf, golfing green. The rocket had successfully stayed intact on its journey up to 800 feet, enduring an incredible nine Gs of force on launch without showing any signs of stress on that balsa wood and foam airframe. But something had gone very wrong with the parachute system. After some investigation, I figured out that human error with setting up the rocket engine was to blame. Unfortunately, I'd left too much of a delay on the delay charge. And what had happened is I'd got the timing wrong. Instead of deploying mid-air, the delay charge actually ignited only after the rocket had actually hit the ground. It was frustrating not to get the plane back in one piece, but what a spectacular flight it had been. The rocket plane had proved its durability in high-speed flight and given us valuable knowledge to go forward with for the next aircraft. I'm so pleased that we got this thing to 180 miles an hour. Now, although the original plan with this was to turn it into an RC plane, I don't think that this is the right aircraft to do that with because it's turned out to be so heavy and have such a small wing area that, um, yeah, I think we need to go a different direction with that. The direction I do want to take this X-15 program in, though, is to just keep it purely rocket themed and um, just, yeah, increase the size, increase the power and see how fast we can get a rocket plane to fly um, on high power engines. Can we even get close to the sound barrier? That would be amazing. We're going to be doing loads of aircraft videos this year, so make sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already and also watch this video next so that you can, yeah, watch more Project Air stuff on YouTube in the meantime. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy this one too. So yeah, subscribe, click on this video and um, I'll see you on the next one.